Whether it's watching the horrendously sad video of a turtle with a straw lodged in its nose, the new bans on plastic straws arising at restaurants, or a friend yelling at you to stop using plastic straws, I'm so guilty of this, this is what the plastic straw movement is seen as today. It's all great and a step in the right direction. However, this movement isn't just about the straws. And in fact, the message behind this movement has very little to do with straws. I'll let you think on that for a little bit. But first, I wanted to tell you a little bit about where my passion for the environment came from. So I was in second grade. And every Friday during our language arts period, we'd be given this independent reading time, where we were given the classic kid magazines. You might remember these, but basically it put all these current events into elementary school vocabulary. Uh, here's a picture of it, so you can better uh, understand what I'm talking about. This particular Friday, the, story was, the cover story was global warming. Now keep in mind at this age, I was still pretty shielded from reality. I wasn't really aware of what was happening in the world around me. So as I continue to read about this idea of global warming, I was overcome with this unprecedented fear. My young brain couldn't really comprehend or reason with the idea that our world was at such a great threat. So as I read about polar bears losing their homes and sea levels rising, I became terrified. Was our world going to end? Were we all going to drown underwater? And these were the questions that really stuck in my head. And just to show you how much this problem overcame me, here's a picture of a journal I used to keep in third grade where I'd come up with these inventions or solutions to current environmental problems. They aren't scientific or mathematical by any means but it just shows you how much this problem overcame me. And yes, although I was overcome with this fear really due to my lack of knowledge at this point in my life, it was really a moment that sparked my passion for the environment that I still hold today. And as I grew older, I, this fear I once had turned into determination. I started to become more mature and more aware of what was happening around me. I was determined to find a way that I could make an impact, even as just one person. Climate change is still a huge problem today. And even if you don't believe in it, you can acknowledge that there are many environmental problems today, whether it's deforestation, animal extinction, or the uncontrollable amounts of trash being produced every single day. All these problems are ones that my generation and the generations after are going to have to face the impacts of. Now, such a big problem makes us feel like there's nothing we can do to fix it. But that's where we go wrong. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, what's the point? What's the point of me picking up that piece of trash? What's the point of me not using a plastic straw? What's the point of me not idling? It's not going to change anything. I'm only one person. People think that there has to be this huge gesture or change to really solve the environmental crisis that we're in. But really, the answer is a lot smaller and simpler than we realize. The answer is the foundation of the straw movement. But to really understand what the message behind this movement, it's important to understand what the problem with straws are first. So it's a device used for minutes, but then will end up in a landfill for hundreds of years. Once it's, in, it's said that every day in the US alone, we use 500 million straws. That's a lot of straws sitting in our landfills that will last a whole lot longer than our lifetime. And that's even if they do stay in the landfill. Oftentimes when it rains, these straws will end back up in our oceans through runoff, where they're just floating there, waiting to be eaten or lodged into some unlucky animal, or washed back, on up, washed back up on our shores, along with a lot of other trash that followed the exact same path. Not only is it affecting our land and our water, but if 500 million straws are being produced every day, that is a lot of straws being produced in factories, releasing huge amounts of air pollution, fueling climate change, and threatening our air quality. All of that just for a single straw used in minutes. And sadly, all these negative impacts that came with just a straw isn't just something that happens with straws. It happens with so many areas and things that we come in contact with every single day. And we don't even realize the toll it's taking on the environment. So, but this is where the problem lies. And this is what the straw movement is really advocating. But it's just as easy to stop all this unforeseen destruction. There are many opportunities that we have in our day where we can make these small changes that don't only have a positive but effective impact on the environment. So I'm going to go over three main areas that I have made some changes in my life to show you can make some similar changes in your life. 
They aren't big changes by any means, and oftentimes require very little effort. And just before I get into this, you'll be hearing me talk about carbon dioxide and carbon emissions a lot. Carbon is a naturally occurring element. It's good for the environment in moderation. So it basically, it controls the global temperature. However, when we have too much carbon, such as like released um, carbon emissions, like in, from cars and factories, then there's too much heat being trapped inside of the earth, which is what we like to call climate change. This is related to a lot of problems, such as extreme weather, melting of our ice caps, and destruction of coral reefs. So, the first thing I'm gonna to talk to you guys today about is plastics. Now, we come in contact with so many plastics in our everyday lives, and they have numerous harmful effects on the environment. You also start to hear me talk about single-use plastics a lot. A single-use plastic is any plastic item used once, but then will be thrown away forever. So think plastic utensils, or plastic straws, plastic bags. Um, I'm only gonna go over a few, but the list goes on. So first, resist that plastic bottle. One of the most beneficial things I think somebody can do is get a reusable water bottle. The Guardian states that one million plastic bottles are bought around the world every single minute. Such a high number takes a devastating toll on the environment. For every ton of plastic made, that's three tons of carbon dioxide released. So let me throw some math at you. If you alone were to switch to a reusable water bottle, you'd be saving 1,460 water bottles from entering the environment every single year. So if one ton of plastic is equivalent to 18,000 of those 16 ounce plastic water bottles, then this room alone, assuming that there's 100 people in this room, would be saving 24.3 tons of carbon dioxide from entering the environment every single year. It's a small population, but it's a huge impact. The next thing we can do is pack a reusable lunch. Don't use those single-use plastic bags or paper bags when you're packing your lunch. Use those reusable containers or bags and put it in a lunchbox. Americans use 100 billion plastic bags a year. This, this takes 12 million barrels of oil to produce. Plastic bags are only dirty to manufacture, but are lethal when littered, killing over 100,000 marine animals every year. And on a similar note, shop with reusable bags. Oftentimes when we go into a store and we're only getting a few items in the first place, we don't even need a plastic bag. So just tell the cashier, whoever's cashing you out, they don't need a plastic bag or use a reusable bag. If you alone were to stop using plastic bags, over your lifetime you'd be saving 22,000 plastic bags from entering the environment. And lastly, but of course, opt out of that plastic straw. Like I said earlier, 500 million straws are used in the US alone every single day. And due to their shape, they can't even be recycled. If they were to go to the recycling facility, they would fall through the sorting process and be sent right back to the landfill. So some alternatives. Paper straws are good, but no straw or reusable straws are the best option. So the next time the waiter comes out and asks you for your drink order, just tell them that you don't need a plastic straw. The next area I'm gonna to talk to you guys today about is home habits. Now these are probably some of the easiest changes I think somebody can make. So the first thing that we can do is recycle. You've heard this one since you were a little kid. Yet, 80% of all recyclables are still thrown away today. Recycling is a great way to keep plastics and cardboard and any other recyclable item out of places it doesn't belong, such as our oceans or the side of roads. And it's as simple as taking that recyclable material and putting it in the recycling bin. Next thing that we can do is flip the switch. And what I mean by that is turn off any appliances when you aren't using them. And I'm not just talking about turning off your lights when you're not in that room. That is great, you should definitely do that but I'm talking about turning off your TVs, your game consoles, your fans, your computers. Any appliances that you aren't using, you should turn off as you're just wasting unnecessary electricity. The average American household wastes up to 30% more electricity than an efficient one. And most houses source their energy from power plants around dirty fossil fuels, like the one you see above, which releases huge amounts of air pollution. Like I said earlier, fueling climate change and threatening our air quality. The next thing that we can do is turn off our faucets. Two gallons of water flow from your faucet every single minute it's on. So whether it's when you're brushing your teeth or when you're cooking, turn off that water when you aren't using it. You'll be conserving a lot more water 
and preventing water scarcity, which is basically when we're using way too much water, then that can actually be supplied. On a similar note, take shorter showers. The EPA recommends that you take five to seven minute showers. And here's why. 2.5 gallons of water flows from your shower head every single minute that's on. So let's say you wait for your shower to warm up for five minutes, even though it might already be warmed up in one minute. That's 12.5 gallons of water wasted before you ever even stepped foot in that shower. So don't waste a second once your shower is warm, and you'll be conserving a lot more water daily. And the last area I'm going to talk to you guys today about is driving. Cars and trucks account for one-fifth of all the United States carbon emissions. But the good thing about this section is it's not only easy to make these changes, but it'll be saving you money too. So the first thing that we can do is lay off that gas pedal. Aggressive driving causes you to burn through your gas tank a lot faster, which produces a lot more pollution than necessary. Instead of the hard braking and constant accelerating, try gradually increasing in speed or coasting whenever possible. You'll find this one isn't just better for the environment, for be but also better for your wallet as well. Next, unpack your trunk. You can actually make a positive impact on the environment just by keeping your car clean. For every 100 pounds added to your car, that's 1 to 2% of fuel efficiency lost. So maybe you have some heavy items in your trunk, or maybe your car's really in need of a cleanup. Well, consider doing these. It'll help the environment, and you'll also be saving gas money from all that heavy uh, luggage that you've had to be carrying around your car. And lastly, don't idle. This is a change that I highly encourage you make. Idling is very harmful for the environment. Yet, so many people don't, don't even realize it's happening. Let's say that you're waiting to pick somebody up, like your kid or your friend, or you're waiting to go into school or work. But if you're sitting in your car and your engine is still on, that means you are still burning through your gas, which is still releasing pollution. This habit not only threatens our cardiovascular and respiratory health, but like I said, it's releasing a lot of pollution, and it's even illegal in some places to do. Sustainable America states that 3.8 million gallons of fuel are lost every single day by this habit. This is equivalent to $7,890,000 lost every day around the world. Idling is very bad, <laughs> but it can all be prevented just by turning your keys. And most cars can actually still stay on without their engine on. Just turn your keys to the battery or press the button if you remote start car and you'll still be able to enjoy all the electrical functions of your car while also being idle free. You'll be making a positive impact on the environment just by sitting in your car. Now, these were only a few examples of many changes that you can make in your daily lives. But the point to see here is, we cause a lot more destruction to the environment in ways we don't even realize. I know I just bombarded you with a lot of information. But all these examples, all these changes, are simple and small ones to make. And you don't have to pursue all these at once. Maybe choose on focusing on one first. And I, I would highly encourage that's idling. That's very bad. Um, and then choose on implementing another one every month. I didn't have to undergo some major lifestyle change to accommodate for the Earth. A lot of these changes I made a long time ago, and today it's just more just secondhand nature. The straw movement was meant to bring awareness to us. Awareness of our actions, our everyday actions, and how they are actually causing a lot more harm to the environment in ways we don't see or realize. But it's also demonstrating to us the power we really have in facilitating a healthy and beautiful environment. So, I, and it all starts with ditching that straw one straw at a time. And this brings me back to grade school in the book The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. On the last page of this book, it holds a dark and lifeless scene, one that had been overrun by pollution and human activity. The only thing left on this page is a boy standing on a tree stump that reads, unless. The quote that's on this page is one I've held with me ever since I was a little kid. But it shows us the power we have in making a positive change on this world. But nothing is going to change if we don't make that effort. So the quote reads, 
unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Thank you.